Yayoka Soma is an 11 year old Japanese drummer, currently the youngest ever to be part of the Drummer World Top 500 Drummers. But honestly, if you're on my channel, you probably already knew that. Today I'm taking a deep dive into one of her most impressive covers to date, Deep Purple's Burn. This is one that I'm still blown away by every single time I see it. I loved it so much that I've already made four videos based on it, from reactions, to my own cover, to even trying to play guitar along with Yoyoka's drumming. But of course, most musicians playing any instrument alongside this performance just looks like a noob when they're next to Yoyoka. This cover's so good, even Deep Purple's drummer himself, Ian Pace, has reacted to it and praised her performance. So today, I'm going to go through her cover in depth and try to explain exactly why I think this cover and this drummer is so special. But real quick before I start, I want to apologize for this camera quality. I'm having some technical difficulties this week, but I'm currently working on my setup and hopefully the next video will be much higher quality. That said, if you're excited to see this, pound that like button, subscribe and ring that buddy bell, and let's jump into this. Ooh, that was dirty. Yayoka begins right away with a ton of energy, keeping time with her hi-hat, and then perfectly executing the simple floor tom fill to pump up the intro. She finally blasts into the song with a simple yet powerful fill of 16th notes straight down the kit, immediately taking command over the entire track by locking into the pocket and playing with more power behind her strikes than even I, a 30 year old man, am capable of. Now how this 11 year old girl is able to play with so much power is completely beyond me, but that's what makes her so special. And when she gets to that first 16th note fill, she shows us her true dynamic ability, perfectly accenting the fill. Now someone asked me in my account video what exactly I meant by perfect accenting, so allow me to explain. In music notation, accent notes are the ones you hit harder than the rest to provide dynamic. In sheet music it's often notated using the horizontal wedge or the greater than symbol, the one that looks like ku in Japanese. Probably pronounced that wrong, but I'm trying. This mark indicates that the velocity is greater than the notes around it. There's actually five different accent marks in music notation all determining the length of the note, but that's really not important right now. Just know that an accent is emphasized compared to all the other notes around it. Now listen to Yoyoka play this fill again in slow-mo and watch out for the accents. So now you know what I mean. Speaking of which, her next snare fill is just as perfectly accented. But besides that, another thing I wanted to point out is how perfectly spaced her notes are. The intervals between each note are just as even as a human being can get, locked perfectly into the grid. Now this isn't good on its own, otherwise drum machines would be as good as any other drummer. You know, their notes are always perfectly spaced. But when this is combined with beautiful dynamic accenting, it brings the human element and the soul into the music. And having that perfect blend between timing and accents and dynamics is what makes Yayoka one of the greatest drummers. Yayoka is even able to maintain her power and accenting in the next fill, which switches from straight snare to splitting the 16th note between snare and tom, alternating hands. I explained this a bit in my reaction, but most drummers practice their rudiments on a single flat surface where each note is struck on the same level, and most drum fills will only be alternating their notes on one drum surface at a time. But this fill is split between two surfaces with varying distances alternating between the two back and forth, making this very fast 16th note fill much more difficult than a standard fill would be alternating hands on only one surface at a time. So props to Ian Pace for writing this fill and props to Yayoka for being able to perform it so flawlessly. Just for reference, compare hers to mine. <laughs> where I accidentally missed one of the last notes, hitting the rim. <sighs> now since then, I've actually learned a lot. Now I can see that this is a sign that I was sitting too low. I should have had my throne up a little higher, so my hand wasn't so low that it was hitting the rim. But you live and you learn. And of course, Yayoka's fill was, again, perfect. Now this next really notable fill, has a rest right in the middle of it, opening up all kinds of potential to lose the rhythm and get off tempo. But again, this was perfectly executed, incorporating those accented toms, adding difficulty to this 16th note pattern. The next fill is an inverse of the other tom fill that I went into detail about with the alternating hands between the tom and the snare. 
she just flawlessly glosses over it like it's nothing. But this next part is the most impressive to me in this whole performance. She plays double stroke trills in this build up, which means she's playing two notes at a time per hand, meaning the hand needs to play twice as fast. In this fill, you can see Yayoka using pro-level finger technique to play these double strokes. Now, this is a technique that allows a drummer to play two notes with one motion, basically throwing the stick down at the drum for one note, and then striking another note while using the fingers to grasp it again, basically the hand version of the kick triplet technique. So by throwing the stick at the drum, she's essentially using the same technique as a trill roll, using the rebound of the drum to play more notes. But as opposed to a trill, which just plays as many notes as your stick happens to bounce, she's applying the perfect amount of pressure to play a double stroke or just two notes, which again takes a lot more control and a lot more feel and just knowledge of what you're doing to be able to execute compared to a normal trill. Now the rest of the song continues with many of the same techniques consistently playing with the same power that grabbed our attention in the beginning. But there are some other memorable moments of note throughout the song, like this absolutely perfect triplet fill that just adds such a refreshing twist to this part of the song. And just to clarify, a triplet is when three notes are played in the space of one note, so each quarter note in the measure houses three notes. Which also means the right and left hands are alternating which one is playing the natural accent of each count where the quarter note lands. So basically, one, two, three, four, da 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 And that's right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Which again is a lot more difficult than the same hand landing on each count when you're playing groups of four. Like da 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 Every time your right hand is landing on that count. But with a triplet, it switches between hands. da 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 Come on guys, as quarter pounders, you should know this. Anyway. The rest of the song is just an incredible show of endurance, maintaining that same energy and power for all six minutes of the song. Another part I really like is how she maintains her rhythm during this part, where the kick and cymbals are hitting on the AND of different counts. It starts on the 1, but then hits on the AND of the 2 and the 4, and then 1, 3, 2, 4, it like alternates. Well here, I'll just count for you. 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1A e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1A e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1A e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1A e and a 2E e now you see how hard it is to actually count that. But she still lands flawlessly on the one of the next measure because she kept her time so well during that very difficult part. Now during the guitar solo, Yayoka does what I always say a good drummer needs to do. Just take a back seat, show restraint, and provide a solid backbone of the song. Why do I know this so well? because I'm guilty of doing the exact opposite of that for most of my life, actually. And guess who taught me how important it is? Yayoka herself. Yeah, that's right. An 11-year-old girl had to teach a 30-year-old drummer the most important aspect of drumming. Actually, I was 29, so... <laughs> but anyway, it all comes down to supporting the band as a whole and doing what's best for the song. Not what's best for you as a drummer trying to show off. I mean, if you've got no pocket, you've got no right to be showing off anyway. Hear that, 25-year-old me? Now, one more notable part is Yayoka's ride pattern during the solos. Even Ian Pace pointed this out during his reaction. Yeah, she got that bit right too. And yet again, it's another thing I botched when I tried to cover this song. Due to circumstances beyond my control. Impulsivity and inattention to detail. Hey, hey. Yeah, she got that bit right. Back before I fully accepted that yes, Yayoka is a better drummer than me. I mean, even at seven years old, she was a better drummer. Now check out these acrobatics at the end of the guitar solo. Notice how the ride and hi-hat are keeping the beat with opposing sides of the body and how the kick, which normally keeps the beat, is playing offbeat on the and of each count. So both the kick and the hi-hat are opposing their nature and the hi-hat's doing it in two different ways because it's playing on the downbeat and your left foot is playing with your right hand at the same time. 
which isn't as easy as the other way around. <laughs> then the snare is only playing half as many notes as the rest on the two and four, but she just effortlessly switched over to this pattern from the more traditional pattern that she was doing before that. Then there are these very fast snare fills that are just thrown in after all those complex polyrhythms which are a lot more difficult this far into the song after being exhausted by those crazy fills in the beginning and just playing through the song. I know I struggled with these myself, but I am horribly out of shape. Yet another chorus and organ solo pass and Yayoka still maintains her endurance, once again nailing the accented ride pattern and really accentuating the featured instrument of that part of the song like a pro does. And even over five minutes into the song when those insane verse fills return, she glides through them with just as much power and precision as the beginning. Now at this point in the song, when I played this, my shirt was drenched, I was exhausted, I was just ready to be done, and I barely made it to the end. <laughs> I need to exercise more. But in the last verse, Yoyoka unleashes her inner John Bonham, doing a phenomenal double kick quadruplet Mike Portnoy stock fill, perfectly spaced and executed, again with the precision of a drum machine and the infectious feel of Bonzo himself. Not many people can play with that kind of feel. But again, even this far in, she still nails the double stroke trill build up fill and finishes strong with a masterful outro fill, complete with double kick, cymbals, and beautiful 16th note fills, but with a lighter pianissimo touch, which ultimately gives more weight to that really powerful ending with the two kick notes and cymbals. It's just really phenomenal playing. And this is why this cover still blows me away. I think I went into enough detail. <laughs> I tried to cover every standout detail of the song without boring you. Hopefully everything made sense. Thank you for letting me ramble. But that's where I'm going to wrap it up. You may know this is only my second attempt at making this deep dive analysis video like this. I was just blown away by the support on my last one. And for all you maniacs, I do have another deep dive video coming soon. But I want to thank all my new patrons that hopped on board after that video. So thank you. Thank you, Drogon R, Matt, Rabbi Rabs, Vladimir Chupin, Juan San, and Rahim. Thank you for upping your pledge from what it already was. I'm so grateful for all the support all of you have shown me just in general, and uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say. It's unbelievable. So thank you for that. Again, I just recently revamped my website, so if you want to make a request for a video I will make, go check that out. It's the first link in the description below, and also my Patreon is the best way to support me. I do have both YouTube memberships and Patreon. I call them both my buddy club because just basically whatever you're more comfortable with, if you want to support. Uh, some people don't trust YouTube, other people don't trust Patreon, so I just want to give options to people. But if you're wondering which option's better for supporting the channel, Patreon takes a lot less of a cut than YouTube does. YouTube takes like 30%, Patreon takes under 10 So just to let you know, they're both basically the same thing, they come with all the same rewards, but more of your money is going to the channel if you donate to Patreon as opposed to joining the buddy club on YouTube. But on YouTube, you do get some sweet badges, like you get a badge on your name in the comments and you get access to some cool emojis that you can only get on the YouTube buddy club. So if you do want to support, it's really up to you either way you choose. I'll be very grateful for your support. Again. I don't really know what I'm doing yet on the whole business side of this. This just started as a passion for music that I've had my entire life. And now I'm trying to get to a point where I can make a modest living off of it so I can spend my time doing this without being distracted with other work. So that's my goal. And I really appreciate all of your help helping me to reach that goal. So I think that's it. If you enjoyed this video, pound that like button. If you haven't yet, subscribe and ring that buddy bell. Now real quick, before I go, I'm just gonna pop this into the end of this video and see what happens. I recently made a post in my community tab. I started learning Japanese a few days ago and this morning I accidentally spent three hours studying Japanese. I got up at 6.30, started studying at 7, and all of a sudden I look at the clock and it's 10. Now I did take notes 
you know, so I can remember what I learned. I'm trying not to go too fast because you know, I want to retain all the information, but I want to thank all of you for your suggestions on that post. Currently, I'm using three different apps. Duolingo, I find is really helpful learning the different characters and memorizing them, but Busu is also very helpful for both learning characters, how to write them, and incorporating them into practical phrases. I haven't gotten far enough into Duolingo to know if it does much of that yet, but Busu kind of jumps right into it and uh, thank you. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Trecha Srecha. Sorry for that very American accent saying your name, but thank you for the uh, recommendation to use Busu because I'm really loving it. I just got it this morning and I'm already on lesson 10. When I started the app, I said I was only going to do 10 minutes a day and I accidentally did three hours. So instead of my 20 point goal that I had for today, I did 137. Anyway, that's been a very helpful app. That's definitely what I'd recommend from everything I've tried so far. But I'm also going to try Pimsleur, which looks like it's really good for more of the audio side, listening to people speak. I think there's options to watch shows and stuff with subtitles and they teach you as you go. So I'm trying a bunch of different avenues of learning to start and then I'm going to pick the ones that are most effective because I know it's going to take a lot of work, but I think finding the method that works the best for you is the most important thing because then you can stay consistent, persistent, and I'm hoping within one to two years I'll be able to have a basic elementary school conversation with people who speak Japanese so that's my goal in that aspect but I'm just gonna share with you a little bit of what I learned this morning Konnichiwa hajimamashite Watashi wa wave potter. It's probably very bad pronunciation but I just said hello or good afternoon nice to meet you I'm Wave Potter. I'm feeling pretty good about what I learned in just one morning and a couple other days of 20 minutes or so. Anyway, arigato. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. And I'd like to think we're all friends here. So, jaa mata. And for anyone who prefers this, shitsu rei sh sh shimasu. <laughs> I hope I didn't butcher that. I mean, no disrespect. I'm just still very new to this and I'm trying to learn. So please feel free to leave your criticisms in the comments below. I know over 50% of my audience is Japanese. So I guess now half my viewers think I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, I know you guys are really nice, so thank you for all that support on my recent post about learning Japanese. And anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap this up, so thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>